Hi everybody. Today is kind of a continuation of yesterday. Yesterday we went, in last yesterday's video, we were getting our Christmas tree and a little logs and this is the same time, but I wanted to explain a few things about holding back heavy loads and, and how I do it with my horses and, and some of the things that have happened to me over the years holding back a heavy load. I do not have any brakes on my wagons, never have. Um, I wish I did, but I don't. And uh, because of it, I've had some situations, not too much really. Um, one in general I can think of where I got in a little trouble and I'll tell you about that. But anyways, we are coming to a hill right here. It's not a huge, huge hill, but it's pretty good downhill grade. And I have with us Buck and Ken and Brenda's on the cart holding the holding everything together and of course we have that small little logs with our Christmas tree on. So anyways, let me explain a few things. Um, when, you, when you're going down a hill, you need some way to hold back the load. So um, let me say, explain a couple things. This piece, this is the pole and this piece, this three piece thing is called a neck yoke. Now, one of the most, one very important thing you need to do when you're going down a hill is make sure that is extremely strong. Um, if that breaks, or if the pole breaks, going down a hill, you can run into some serious problems, and that's happened to me before. So anyways, you need to have that, and you need to have that very good and strong. And then you come back, you have what you call, what we, I call the pole straps. That's this strap right here, and it's hitched to a, a hook right here. And these are lazy straps. They're short lazy straps for the front lazy straps. This pole strap goes back to the side strap right here and this should all stay fairly straight and as you can see that comes back to the britchin and the britchin is where the horses are able to hold back loads they're using their butts to hold stuff back i've had horses do so good holding back they would actually almost sit in the, on their haunches and hold back a heavy 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 load these two are fair at holding back a load but not as good as some that i've had um, especially if they haven't been working a lot, and these two haven't really been. So Buck, for example, she, he'd just soon run and he'd run all the way down the hill. But I will not allow that because, you know, they don't have the control when you're going down a hill like that and trying to go fast. So anyways, as we're going down this hill, I'm gonna have Brenda hold the camera next to Ken. So hopefully you can see what happens. Now this, front, this is a D-ring harness and this front short tug when they're pulling, of course, it's tight. But when they're holding back, they'll actually have a lot of slack in it. See that? Buck is kind of not standing very good, so he's just backing up like that, and you really saw it. But as we go down the hill, hopefully you'll see this bow right around because they're putting that much pressure on the bridge and the side straps and the pole straps to hold back this load. Um, also, this is the lazy strap, and there should not be any amount of weight on this to put on their necks. Everything should be on the back. That's the way this is transferred through. So as we're going down a hill, the holding back card, the tongue or the pole will actually come up into the air higher. And so they'll even be less stressed. These will be really, really loose. Um, so when you're going down the hill, this stays tight and this stays tight. When, when a horse is pulling a heavy load, this will actually go slack. And this will go slack because the tug is really tight. So I hope I'm explaining that fairly good. And uh, um, if you want to just hold them for a second, I'm going to walk down just a little ways to the top of the hill and tell them a story about what happened to me quite a few years ago with another pair of horses. So the other pair of horses I'm thinking back on that I had troubles with was uh, another buck, a, a Belgian, a buck and, and Nick. They were both a pair of pair of brothers actually and nice belgian horses about the same size as my two blacks and we were coming upon this hill which we've hauled logs up and down the, i mean down this hill for the past 30 years we've had this woodlot for a long long time and we've hauled a lot a lot a lot of loads down this hill but anyways we got down to almost the bottom of the hill as far as you can see right there and i had my neck yoke i can't remember exactly what happened either the ring that hitches onto the pole or one of the side neck yokes broke. I think it was one of the side neck yokes broke. So, so the one horse had no, could not help holding back at all. He was completely free at the front of him. 
So what happened, because only one was holding back, we actually swung right into the ditch. And uh, fortunately the one horse did hold it back, but in the process, uh, let me think now, in the process, it was coming and hitting him. And so he got a little bit hurt, but we hit a rock and rolled the cart and threw me right off. I got a little bit hurt. and uh, But it didn't turn out as bad as it could have. But those are the things I am more concerned when it comes to a, harnesses on a horses and rigging on a horses. I'm more concerned about holding back the things that we need for holding back a load than I am for pulling a load. If the evener breaks or if anything breaks when you're pulling a load, generally, it's not a big deal because it will all stop. Um, but when you're holding back a road, that's a lot more dangerous because what happens is everything that is behind them will run right into them and they can get really hurt and people can get very hurt too in that situation. So anyways, I think we're good to go and I will get on and let Brenda take over with the camera. Go this way. Oh. 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 That calf is down. So as we head down the hill, I will, when I get to the brow of the hill, top of the hill, I will really put the pressure on the lines to make sure that they're walking. I don't want them running or going fast in any way. I will even seesaw my hands a little bit if need be to put even more pressure on them to make sure they're walking. Brenda, can you stop back here just a little bit? Watch my hands. So I will actually seesaw like this to make darn sure they're going as slow as they can and putting all the pressure on their butts to hold this load back so we don't get going too fast. If you get a load that's starting to go really fast, I mean, you can imagine, it's just all the harder to hold it back. They're doing a great job today of holding back this load. Now this is a, actually a small load. Um, the bigger loads, the bigger the load, the harder it is it holds back. I don't like to stop a load on a hill, whether I'm going up or whether I'm going down, unless it's a semi-level spot so that the wagon can sit there without pushing them either way. I can remember also another story about 40 years ago of myself um, coming down a steep, steep hill and I was actually using a sled and it's, this was back in Vermont where we had some pretty good hills <clears throat> and I was coming down this hill and the horses were holding back really good and then the end of the runner hit a stump and it stopped everything dead except for me. I flew through the air and fortunately I was able to land on the pole and grabbed the hames to stop me from going any farther. And all was well, but I'm just glad I did that back when I was young and agile. I would hate to have that happen today at my age. And now we're coming to another little hill that comes down to the blacktop. This is not that much of a hill, but it still can push them. So what I generally do here is I'll hold them back and make sure they, the first part of the hill especially make them walk and on this small load I would just make them walk the whole time anyways but there's there's been years there's been times I should say when I've had done a lot of hauling down this hill that I tend to get bigger and bigger loads as the horses get into shape I feel I can haul more and more loads and so what I what I do is when I get down about three quarters down the bottom of the hill, I do sometimes let them go a little bit faster, even at a little bit of a trot, just to, it's a little, just a little bit easier than trying to hold it back. Holding back is very hard. So if I just let them trot this last little bit, um, I do do that some, um, because I know it flattens out and it's not that hard to hold back. I'm not sure if this is true, but it seems like holding back heavy loads like this does something for their pulling ability, even though they're holding back. A team that can hold back really good tends to be able to pull bigger and heavier loads. 
Now that may just be me thinking, I don't know, but it just it seems to have it seems to work out that way for me. He's turning there. I think. Turning there, I think. I was quite a ways ahead of him, wasn't I? Sorta. Is he turning? No. Oh, Tom, come on by. That's my neighbor. I thought he was turning, so I pulled out in front of him. Jump on. Yeah, good thing I didn't get run over this. Oh, oh. Careful, that. Careful. Oh. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a great day.